Welcome back church family. I am Heidi and I'm so excited to share another update with you guys. I had the wonderful opportunity to introduce you all to our church family over in Okimbo, Kenya last week and the week before we've been sharing with you guys, put some videos together, put those out to share with everyone. And I just want to thank you all. It's been such an overwhelming, just exciting time of everybody kind of welcoming them in, getting to, you know, send friend requests and get to talk with one another. And I know so many of you have messaged me and been like, oh my goodness, look, look at this, look at this, look at this. So that has been so great. And I want to just maybe weekly, bi-weekly, we'll kind of figure it out as we go, but I want to share updates with you guys. We have had the just blessed opportunity to talk with Untanga, Eric, as we've been calling him, that is his last name, um, but we've had an opportunity to talk with him every single day for weeks now, um, have video calls in, and you guys, every time we had the opportunity to speak with him, it just is such an outpouring of love for the Lord that it honestly just, it brings Pastor Brandon and I to tears every single time because to see people that love the Lord, desire the Lord, just want to work to his goodness, take scripture, means what it says and says what it means and we apply it directly. Um, it's just been an outpouring of just God's goodness and it it's just amazing. And so we really wanted to try to take as many of these things that Eric is being so wonderful and just feeding us lots of information because we're saying, hey, you know, we can't be there and that stinks. So we're seeing in direct communication. And then I said, hey, no, I, I want to see all the things. Take photos and videos and send them like we want to see. We're bummed we can't be there with you. You bet your bottom dollar the moment I have the ability to fly to Ogimbo, we're out of here. Kenya, here we come. We can't wait to go. Um, but we can't do that quite yet. So right now we're just staying in very close connection every single day, discussing things, sharing things. Um, I want to share again, Eric has been one of the most transparent, open human beings I think I have ever dealt with in my entire life. And I'm not exaggerating. Brandon and I have been just beyond amazed at his, like his just diligence and making sure that everything is on the up and up. He goes above and beyond every single time. And, um, it, it just, it honestly just blows my mind. And, and Eric, um, we just, we love you all out there. And he promises me, he says, I know our, the Ekagusi is the language that they, that's their local language there. And he says, I promise with time you'll get better. So I'm trying, we're working on it. <laughs> my family and I, we're all kind of working on um, upping our skills here. So I'm sure pronouncing names and things, we will get better. Give us some time, we're trying. So um, I just wanna give you guys some little updates, share some videos um, and different things that we've had and just kind of put some photos and things together for you all so that you can see what our a &P Church family here is getting to work on and do in far off places like Ogimbo, Kenya, okay? So I told you guys last week in the introduction video that um, it is Eric and his wife. They have three children. They just had little baby Demetria who was born a couple weeks ago. Um, and then they have their daughter, Simile and a little boy, Clinton. But they started bringing in children. These are abandoned and orphaned children um, in the local area that um, have just really gone through some awful things, you guys. It, it's a lot. And he really felt moved to bring these children in, to open their home to these children and not only care for their physical needs, but for their spiritual needs as well. He is training them up as his own children in the ways of the Lord. And um, they have their hands full of you guys. Absolutely full hands, but full hearts. So there are 12 children plus their three that they currently have in their little one roof home there in the beautiful, beautiful countryside of Ogimbo, Kenya. If you guys look it up, it's gorgeous. Every time we talk with Eric, their backyard is just so lush and so beautiful. So we have offered to him, and let me just put this out there as well, you guys. I know we're all just a bunch of crazy people on the internet that nobody's ever met, but they, all of these things that I'm going to tell you, this is not somebody who we met on the internet who is coming to me and saying, hey, I need this, I need this, I need this. I drive poor Mr. Eric crazy every single day. Eric, I love you, brother. And I know I probably just drive you crazy. I ask all the questions. What do you need for this? What do you need for that? What is this? What is that? So I will let you know that never once have they come to us and been like, hey, can you give us this? Can you give us that? No, the only thing Eric has ever asked for is if you can remember us in your prayers, we trust God, he will provide. 
All of this has been of my prying and my doing. As Brandon and I have discussed these things, we've discussed them with Pastor Travis and his wife Alexis and all kind of gone together in this fact finding. But in talking, I said, you know, 15 kids, you know, well, one nursing, right? But that, that's, that's a lot. What does it take ideally every week to keep kind of just everybody fed and in going? And he broke it all down to me and it roughly hits about 125 US dollars every week that we for a handful of weeks now have been able between just our own personal funds and then donations through the church have been able to send over funds to help them keep up just to be able to go and get the groceries and the very basic things. He sent me their exact shopping list, you guys. These kids are eating nutritious but very basic foods, right? They're not living off of McDonald's and candy. It's, it's, it's good nutritional food, but very, very basic. And so to be able to support them and make sure that children are literally staying fed, I think is very, very important. Um, so we've been able to do that. And as often as people give and we are able to do so, that's something that we absolutely want to do. The next topic I came up to, though, is we could try to come up with $125 every week to try to send over for food, right? And they're trying to be as frugal and as cost effective as they can be over there to make stuff stretch for as long as it can and things of that nature. But something that Eric's been very passionate about, and we definitely agree in this, is if we can find ways to help you become self-sustainable, that's always going to be a better option, right? So we could try to come up with $125 every single week, or we could help in some of these projects to get things going so that way you can produce your own food, find ways to produce an income and do different things. Eric works odd jobs all over the place between farming and brick building and whatever else comes up. He is always busy and always on the go on top of raising 15 children and caring for everybody. How he fits it in, you guys, I honestly, I don't know. I mean, the man is always on the go, always working, training up the kids, just all of the things. It's fantastic. So if we can help in some of these things so that they can start still working hard, but being able to produce their own stuff instead of having to go and, you know, pull up odd jobs all over the place, I think we're definitely working in, you know, steps in the right direction. Again, so that way he can not only study under Pastor Brandon and Pastor Travis and continue to grow his knowledge of the Lord, but that he can go and continue to preach that to the local community as well. So we said, let's look into some ways that you can be more self-sustainable. They do have a little piece of land right there that they live on. Um, it's not very much. So a little garden, they grow like avocado and bananas and a few little things, but with that many kids, it really isn't that much land. So we're definitely looking around to see um, how much it would cost to rent little plots of land that they could do some more farming and gardening to grow not only food for themselves, but food to be able to take to the market and sell as well. But then I know Eric and I had talked, we had a lot of chicken talk. And if you guys know me, I love my chickens. So we had a little bit of time to talk about that. And I said, what about chickens? He had a flock that he lost um, due to a disease that came through a while back. And so they've been down, they have one hen and one rooster and that's it. And so I said, what if we try to get some more chickens, right? That would be a great way. Again, that's immediate food for you and the children. And then if we have extras, that can be turning around and starting to make an income as well. He absolutely agreed. And so we went ahead and kind of sent over some funds so that we could kind of get the process started and start figuring it out. Um, he has been, and guys, I'm going to send you, I'm going to post all kinds of pictures and things. After I talk for a minute, I'm going to post all kinds of stuff for you guys to see. But he was able to um, get the base of this thing built. And you guys, I'm talking, he has been working so hard this week. We've been talking with him all week throughout it. And I, I don't know how he doesn't just crash out <laughs> at the end of the day. And yet he's still staying up and joining our church services at like 3 a.m. It's fantastic. We're just so thankful. But they were able to harvest the wood. So that was going out, harvesting itself, splitting it, transporting it back, doing all of that. They have built now a whole, we've got the base of the poultry house so far. You guys, it is going to be large enough that it can probably hold upwards to close to about 100 chickens. It's ginormous. It's this huge space for the chickens so that way they have a safe guarded home to be able to keep them. But 
we're two steps away from actually being able to be sustainable, producing food and an income out of this, okay? Everything has been done so far except for the roof. We've got to get a roof on it. That for the materials, transportation, and all of that is probably looking at about 100, 110 US dollars. So prayer one that we are praying for the provisions for is the materials to be able to get the, a roof on this thing. So that way we can get chickens in there, which leads us to step two, getting the chickens. So to get chickens that are already ready to lay, any of us who have had chickens before, we know this deal. Here in America, in North Carolina, I can go to Tractor Supply or Rural King and I can get little baby chicks for about $2, right? Super cute, super little. They're not gonna be laying eggs for at least a year. And that's if they don't get sick and die in the meantime. It's, it's a big thing. You can lose a lot of chicks when they're small. To get a hen who is already laying or getting ready to lay here, that's easily 20, 25 bucks, depending on what type of chicken you're going for, okay? Um, but that's a, a pretty median um, price range for getting a laying hen. I was talking with Eric, he can get laying hens for five or six dollars a piece. So ideally, we would like to see 30 hens that they could go and pick up to put in this chicken house to get started. So that's to get started again. That's eggs, that's food coming in for the 15 children plus Eric and his wife Divna right away and then also extras for them to be selling so that they are being able to bring in a steady income without so much being gone in kind of stressful working conditions. Again, if we can look at the resources that they have available to them and help out so that they can start pulling in these self um self-employee type, you know, self-sustainable type practices. Again, these are great skills that the children are going to learn. These are things that Eric and his wife are happy to be working and doing. They're being able to keep 100% of the profits. Sorry guys, we had a little debacle here at the house. So again, got to get a roof on this thing. We've got to get chickens to put in this thing. Then we can start bringing in food and can start bringing in an income. Um, we are looking to partner with them as long as the Lord would allow us to, you guys. We're excited about this. Um, the things we are praying, of course, Lord willing, would be to go over to Kenya to get to spend time with them, to get to help them. Again, though, we're, we're excited and ready to help in any way that we can, if we can go over there. Um, I mean, you, you look at options like having a church over there and a school or, or all of these things, right, to go and reach out not only to these children here, but then to be able to offer a safe space, a biblically focused home that is going to train these children up and help them, and not just them, but help others in the community, help other parents be able to keep their children and be able to provide for them and become self-sustainable themselves. So if we're able to start with Eric and Devna at their home and help them to become self-sustainable, to truly train them up and educate them, disciple them in the way of the Lord so that they can pour all of that into the children and then that can overflow from their home into others and continue these things again with the self-sustainability and also, and most importantly, with knowing the Lord. Absolutely. Who knows where that can go, right? So that's really where we want to focus again and making sure that we are helping them, discipling them, teaching them, growing them in every way that we can. And we're learning so much from them as well, but then helping in that kind of self-sustainability as well. So the first thing again that I ask for you guys to pray over with us, and if you feel called and you want to give to this, of course, absolutely, because you guys, this stuff only works when we are all generous givers, when we all do as God calls us to, and we say, hey, I have extra, I have excess, let me give. Let's all give. We are one body, guys. We are the body of Christ. One people, one body, right? As brothers and sisters in Christ. It doesn't matter that they live in Kenya, we live in America, you live in wherever it is that you live, right? We are all one. And so if we can give and we can do stuff, we want to do that. So the first thing that we really ask for y'all's prayer for, and if you would like to give, please, we ask, you know, absolutely, if you feel called, if that's what you feel to do. Um, our family, we're going to keep giving and we're going to keep doing what we can as the Lord will allow it. We seek his will, right? It's not our money. Whatever you have in your bank account, whatever I have in my bank account, it's not mine. It's the Lord's. I am a steward of that. So how I spend my money this week, am I being a good steward with that? 
is that if God, if I have to show him my checkbook at the end of the week, is he going to say, hey, great job. I'm so glad you spent all your money there, right? Those of you who did the Seeing the Unseen study with me by Randy Alcorn, we talked a lot about this. When it comes to the matters of money, Randy Alcorn is one of my most favorite resources to go to and look at for that, right? Are we being eternally minded with how we are using our resources, how we're using our funds, right? What we're doing. So if you feel called to do that and you want to, oh, we thank you for it. If what you have to offer is your prayers for, for provisions, we absolutely will take that, okay? So first thing is to be able to get the roof on the chicken house, that's about $110, and then to actually get the chickens. Again, if we could start off with about 30 of them, that's about $150. So again, big investment, but big reward off of that as well. So being able to have those chickens start pumping out some eggs, turning around, making money off of those so that way that can start filling in the gaps and bringing in that reliable income to fill in with the different food items that they can't produce themselves at this time. So that's kind of that first focus that we are looking at there. Second focus being, and Eric, again, I, I thank you so much for your openness with me. I just... I keep asking him all the things and getting into all the stuff and he's been so gracious um, to all of that with us but it's for the kids you guys we i'm putting together stuff so i want you guys um you got to meet all of the children kind of like everybody in a big group last time but i'm going to be putting together individual things to share with you all about all 12 of the children plus Eric's three little ones because they're just the cutest things ever as well. But I want to share more about these kids with you all and with your children. I know our family, my kids are loving getting to know them more, to um, really thinking about, you know, the excess they have and the things that they're being pretty wasteful of and going, man, why am I doing this? This isn't fair. You know, look at how our friends in Ogimbo are and then we're just over here doing this. Being able to look at those things, I think has been a really eye-opening process for our family and my children specifically. So I'm going to be doing more with that, but I asked Derek, I said, how are they doing on clothes? I've got four kids. They go through stuff so stinking quick. I, I don't know what it is about kids, but it's kind of just how it goes. They outgrow it, they go through it. I mean, it's just a constant process. And he said, to be honest, they really don't have enough clothes to go around. They're just barely making do with what they have. All the kids are outgrowing their shoes. You guys, we know it too. You blink and they outgrow everything. Couple options here. My first thought was, gosh, I have plenty of stuff I could bag up and pack up to send over. And I'm sure you all would too if I asked. I've looked and gotten some quotes, you guys. To ship this stuff over, number one, would take weeks. Number two, there's no real guarantee it's actually going to get there. And number three, it is insanely expensive. Crazy expensive. I mean, some of these quotes, we're talking up over $200. Um, to me, I just kind of chuckled because I asked and I said, well, is there local places that you can get, you know, like thrifted used stuff that's, you know, good condition but good prices? And he said, absolutely, there is. And so for me, I kind of chuckled and I said, gosh, if it's going to cost us over $200 to ship and there's no guarantee that it'll actually get there because that's kind of a thing and talking with other missionary families and stuff that happens quite often, I could just give you $200 and you could go buy all the clothes you need if you have any extra, put it into food or the chickens or whatever, you know, whatever it is that you need. Um, I can't imagine how much it costs to, to feed and put shoes on or 15 with the baby children, right? That's a lot. So that's where I was kind of like, I, I love the idea of being able to fill up boxes and send them over, right? I think that sounds just, it sounds so exciting. I could start today. <clears throat> but point being that it's going to be costly and it's not very efficient. So I'll leave that up to everybody. If you want to box stuff up and you would love to ship it over to them, I can get you his address. You can send it over to the children. That's fantastic it is going to be costly. And that's where I'm thinking, hey, if we want to start putting some funds together to be able to send over, even if we all chipped in 10, 20 bucks, right? We could get a nice little nest egg together to send over and say, hey, go get clothes and shoes and supplies. You know, we, we've been working on food, but go get some of those other things that the kids need as well. So um, that is our kind of other thing. So one, needing to finish up the chicken house. As soon as we get chickens in there, we can start turning around and making money right back out of that. And then two being clothes and shoes for 15 kids, because we all know 15 kids have got to go through a lot of clothes and a lot of shoes. I know my four kids probably go through stuff like 15 year old kids, but that's kids being kids and that's okay. 
So I wanted to share those two big needs with you guys. Now that's enough blabbering from me. Again, if you guys can please keep this in your prayers. Pray that Brandon and I can truly serve Eric and Divna and his family over there in Ogimbo, that we can have clarity and wisdom in all of this, of course, with Pastor Travis and Alexis as well, and then with all of you, that all of us is one church body, one church family can come together and truly connect and share and grow and help. Um, it just is such a such an amazing opportunity. And not that we don't, I mean, you guys, we get just as excited to serve somebody here in our same town as we do someone on the other side of the world. But again, to look and see this it's not even that it's just true need, but it's such a true willingness and excitement that goes with it that just is so hard to not become overjoyous about. Um, and every time we talk with Eric and the children, it just, it fills us with such joy. I just, I can't even. Um, I wish I could find a way to record all of our video calls and share them with you all, but that hasn't been working out so well for me. I've got one, I'll try to do a voiceover so you guys at least can see the area, but um, it's been a little difficult. But Anyways, I want to put that out there. If you guys can keep that in prayer, if you feel called to give, reach out, let us know. We'll figure all that out. We are working on new websites. So I have made, and I will go ahead and get those linked down below. I've made a Facebook page and an Instagram for Eric and his ministry over in Ogimbo, Kenya. Um, we shared this before. There's a lot of issues over there as far as hacking and losing accounts and things like that when it comes to online security. So I went ahead and made one. Eric, when he started his ministry there with the children, bringing in these, these high risk at need um, children, he called it Erickson's Tears of Love. Eric is his last name, Eric Sons, Tears of Love. And I just thought that was absolutely beautiful. Yes, you can see the tears, but tears of love that he has for these children as him and his wife care for them as their own and really take them in and, and everyone around them and really just pour into the community the goodness of Christ. And so I went ahead and made a Erickson's Tears of Love Facebook and Instagram, which I'm excited. I'm going to be adding stuff to as we go through. So if you want to follow along over there, I will link all of that down below. And then I will be making a website as well. Um, we also have a new website coming for our AMP church. And then is some major thunder going off outside and then for my homeschool stuff so I've got a lot of a lot of things in the works that should be coming out here within the next couple of months but I want to go ahead and start updating and sharing the progress and just um just super fun time and, and things with everybody there so I'm going to link those down below. I'm going to go ahead and add some videos so that way you guys can see Eric and all of the kiddos and everything going on over in Ogimbo. Again, keep us in your prayers. Keep them in your prayers. If you feel led to give, absolutely do so. If you want to just write letters or send mail or things of that nature, I'm sure they would love that as well. So go ahead. Let me know what you guys are thinking. If there's anything at all that we can do to serve you, please reach out and just let us know. Never hesitate to reach out to us. Otherwise, I'm gonna let you go see these cute kids because that's gonna be way more fun than listening to me talk. And then I'll see you guys next week or so with the next update, hopefully with the finished chicken coop, right? <laughs> There's some crazy thunder going, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop before it gets really loud here. Bye guys. What's up, Diana? You need to pray for the food. Food. The food is much Close our eyes. Father, we thank you for this food, O Lord. Thank you for this blessing and provision of the food, Father. As much as we are going to eat, Father, bless it and it stay in our stomach. We pray on that, through that in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen! <laughs> So this is all about the food. Well, we have the banana cooked, uh, plus the uh, rice. So that is the way we feed the children.
This campus and work, but because of the love for children, we we have to persevere and all the hardship, but we make sure that because of the love of the children, we feed them as well, they allow us. So thank you for all our uh, supporters and who are uh, standing for us for the prayers for the prayers. We thank God for all that. Amen. God is good. And all the times. God is Very good. Press God again. Press God again. Amen. So so Samuel in the Bible, we need to know how you would buy example balance. Right? Balance. So Samuel, his father was called Elkan. Praise God. Amen. So the father of Samuel was called Elkan. And the mother of Samuel was called Anna. Anna. Praise God. Clap yourself. Amen. You are good children. So we have said the mother, the father of Samuel was called Erika. Anna. The mother of Samuel was called Anna. Anna. Praise God. Amen. So the mother, Mamma Varekuruku, Anna. So very good. So, so I I would like to to teach the children all about the the call of Samuel. So out of Samuel, we have to understand or I want to get the what the children can learn from the call of Samuel. As I have told them, Samuel, his father is Erikana, the mother of Samuel is is Anna. I also like to educate them about the character, one character we have to learn from Samuel. Samuel, from Samuel we need to learn what we call obedience. So that does make the word obedience. Obedience make the word obedience. Obedience is the word obedience. You are the one who is 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 the one. So Samuel was obedient. Samuel was Obedient. So we are going to see how Samuel was obedient. Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Amen. So when we when we study uh, about about Samuel, praise God, children. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. So we have to see how Samuel was obedient. Samuel can go move so when Samuel was called by God, as we read, not was on my second we say in our book of language, we see we have seen Samuel was called our many times. Our many times Samuel was called Samuel Our many times Samuel was called by God. And Sam, who knows? Amen. Became a call, press God. So he was called four times. Four times. Four? Four times? Four times. We became a call clap for her. Thank you. It was called by God four? Four times. Praise God again. So, we want to know. Nataka kuona kama mna kumbuka. Do you remember? Somewhere who was living with a, a man who was a priest. Samuel na mea tenu mwuzo nikuwa nukua mkwani, e priest ya likuwa na mkwani ya mbae wa likuwa na isi na ye? Na ye. Sinani ya na mkumbuka, who calls the priest name? Ruth, do you know him? Yes. Yes, who was called? Eli. Eli, kikima called Prescott. Amen, amen. 
So Samuel was staying with the priest called Eli. Called who? Eli. Everybody say Eli. Eli. So how did Eli told Samuel when he was called by God? Eli. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel. God is calling you when he told Samuel when he will be called say God I am here God I am here everybody say I am here God I am here God I am here praise God so Samuel was called by God, he listened, and they said, I am here. So, what we learn? What do we learn? What do we learn from here? As Havana, Havana, to be obedient, to be obedient. To be obedient, you must respect this one, you must love this one, also, you must love your pastor, you must love your mom here. Everybody who is small, who is big, you must respect him, respect him or respect him. her. When, when you still start the obedience, start the obedience, it's not obedient. So we have said all of us to be obedient in all the things to, to do. Again, the Kenyan star of the obedient. Obedient. When you are obedient, you become a very good child. God loves you. You get everything, you school, collect, you, you go to church, you play, you worship, you sing, every, everything goes to the Praise God. Amen. So from that, we say thank you. God bless you for this small fast. We have learned that somewhere his father was called Erikana, his mother was called Anna. So Samuel was staying with a priest called Eli. Do you remember Eli? Yes. Eli na kia tevet Samuel. Na kia mo tevet. How did this? How did you say? So from that we thank God, and we shall continue doing every every time for the children for this small fast, so that the children can go spiritually and they know what is important in life. So I thank everybody, and I know it is a blessing for the children to have this uh, fast. I stay will continue growing spiritually. Thank you. God bless you. Everybody say, say, God, God bless, bless you. you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Say hi. 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 We want to sing. Do you want to sing? Sing. One, two, three. Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you this day, morning hours, our Father. Thank you for this day, Father. We, we thank you because of the opportunity of life that we have alive this, this day, O Lord. Thank you, Father, because we are going to study your word. Thank you for the children. We ask for your for your whole spirit to intervene into our hearts, intervene into the hearts of the children, so that Father, whatever I want to teach them, Father, be the glory for your glory, O Lord. Thank you, Father, because of the presence of the children. Thank you, Father, because of our uh, our, uh, our brothers and the sisters who are praying for us and supporting for us. Father, bless them, bless their families, bless their nation, your Lord. Protect them and save, their, save them from any evil ways that the God, the Satan is trying to attack them, our Lord. Father, we glorify and we thank you, Father. As we were going to study your word, Father, we call upon your spirit to guide us and lead us, Father, so that whatever we study be according to your will, Lord. 
for those that we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. Amen. We want you to be smart. But then we are smart. Wanna? We want you. I was smart. you be smart. 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 Smart.